In today's video, I'm gonna share with you how you can create beautiful fall DIYs that are not cheap looking and very elegant. Keep watching. All right, everyone. So for our first fall DIY, what we're going to do is we're gonna decorate this little lantern and we're gonna make it look really fabulous. For that, what we're going to need is some leftover full ribbon. This came from the dollar store a few years ago and you guys know that I like to recycle my ribbon. Just roll it like this and put it away at the end of the season. I'm gonna use my scissors, one of these pipe cleaners, a zip tie, an LED candle with a remote, of course this cute little lantern, and a selection of foliages, berries, and a pumpkin. This is going to be super simple, so I'm actually just gonna push everything aside and I'm going to get started. The very first thing I want to do is create a cute little swag. And for that, what we're going to do is we're going to get our longest piece like this little bushel of uh, wheat. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna separate it in two and I'm gonna push some of them up to kinda get a core. So right here in the middle where we separate is going to be our core where everything's gonna radiate from, all right? So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab some of these leftover pieces and I'm going to stagger them one facing up. Remember what goes up must come down. So you wanna make sure that you never let go of your core right here. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna add one of these berry foliages. This actually was a pick that I took apart from Hobby Lobby because sometimes you know you pay for your items, might as well just go ahead and use them. Now what I want to mention right here is that when you put one up like that, you need to come to the opposite side to stagger them. So that way it creates more texture when you finish your swag. Then I'm gonna grab a few of these berries and I'm gonna just stagger them up and down, creating this radiating motion from all over my swag. Then what you need to do is you need to grab your pipe cleaner and we're gonna I'm sorry, your zip tie, and we're gonna zip tie all of this together real quick. As tight as you can without letting go of your core. That way, well, it doesn't come falling apart. Okay, so then I'm gonna cut the excess. I'm gonna put that to the side. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a cute little bow. And I just wanted a small bow because it is a small lantern. So I'm gonna leave just a small tail, probably about four inches and I'm gonna do a cute little bow, making sure that it's proportionate to my lantern. And if you guys haven't, uh, I'm sure by now everybody knows how to make a cute little bow. It's super easy. This is gonna be a simple bow that doesn't have to overpower our lantern. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your pipe cleaner, push through and give it a twist like this and then we'll fluff. You don't want a bigger bow than this because you don't want to overpower the top of your lantern with all of your goodies. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring this swag and I'm gonna grab this pumpkin. This is going to be our focal point. I'm gonna join it right here. Then I'm going to add the bow to it. And really tightly, I'm going to secure all of this together by spinning it around like this. And then I'm gonna put this to the side We'll fluff in a second. Now what I wanna do is I'm going to open my cute little lantern. I'm gonna insert this little candle that is battery operated and I'm going to turn it on like that. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put my swag on top of my lantern. This would be really cute for a side table. This could be really cute for um, an entryway table. I've done a chandelier with multiple of these. If you guys haven't seen that, I'm going to link it down below. It was a Christmas chandelier that it was just so cute with multiple lanterns decorated for Christmas. And so basically you just wanna attach this to the back very tightly. And once you have that done, you wanna fluff your bow. Make sure that you see some of that bow and that pumpkin. I'm gonna spin it around to me so I can see what I'm doing, perfect. And at this point, what you want to do is also you want to give it a little curvature like that. And just like that, you have a cute little lantern. Now 
Creating fabulous DIYs like this can be super easy if you just follow the instructions. I really hope you enjoyed this particular DIY. I cannot wait to read your comments. So leave me a comment down below. And let me know if this is something you would like to recreate for your very own home decorating. But now I'm gonna show you how to create a beautiful larger than life floral bouquet for your entryway table or any way around your home. Keep watching. Okay, so to make this beautiful arrangement, I'm going to first show you how I do the mechanics. Now I'm going to be doing this arrangement on this metal urn. It's kind of like a chicken wire urn. I love it. However, when I put the container inside, you can see the container. And if I let it drop, well, it's going a little further down than I need it. So I need to do two things. Number one is we're going to foam our container and I already went ahead and pre-glued um, all of the foam inside. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this container with moss. This is just your regular moss from the dollar store and I'm going to need about two bags. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab my hot glue gun and I'm going to start adding some of this glue right here on the bottom. And I disperse the moss all the way here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it right here in the middle and I'm gonna start bringing some of that moss up. So basically just add a ton of glue. I'm gonna bring my little dish over to this side. And then what you need to do is you need to start adding this moss like this, stretching it out. And then what you wanna do is go ahead and give it a little spin and add some more glue right here and then start putting some of this moss on the container. So I'm gonna continue covering this container and I'll be right back, so stay tuned. Okay, so now that we have our container covered in moss, and as you guys can see, it's different looking. Uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab some of this twine, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a little knot over on this side. First of all, really, really tight. And that's just gonna allow us to give a little bit more of a detail. What you want to do is you wanna go ahead and secure all of this moss with this twine by just going up and down and making sure that it's really tight because that's gonna help us put that in the container. Go ahead and give it a spin. And look at this, it just gives it a little bit more of a detail and it's going to make sure that that moss is not going anywhere. All right, I'm gonna secure this and I'll be right back with the next instructions, stay tuned. All right, everyone, so to save some time, I went ahead and swapped my hot glue gun for my glue skillet and I'm gonna go ahead and start greening my container and also I cut all of my stems so that way I can save some time so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just repeat the steps what happens on the left happens on the right and what goes up must come down so if you always keep that in mind you're always gonna have a beautifully balanced container and arrangement for that matter so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and dip into my glue and you also want to get them a little bent going down because that's what's going to give it a balance to your bouquet. So I'm going to continue adding some of this right here. And if you guys see, I'm going on the four corners and then I'm swirling a little bit to continue that balance on my bouquet. So make sure that you grab into your glue. This is a glue pellet skillet. And I just love it because it makes my job so much easier. Now this piece is going to go in a display at Shinoda Design Center. So I'm making sure that it's done correctly. That way if somebody wants to take it home, well, there's not gonna fall apart on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another one right here and always twisting and always pulling down to make sure they drape down like this. I'm gonna go ahead and add this last one like this. This is gonna be a rather large arrangement, so I wanna make sure that it's pretty well green. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some of this other foliage that is going to be a little bit more towards the bottom of the container to start covering the mechanics. And I, at this point, would go ahead and swirl around. However, I'm covering my Lazy Susan because I don't wanna get all glued. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just spin around. And make sure that this smaller foliage goes as close down to 
the container so that way you start covering some of that foam so you don't see the foam even though this bouquet is going to be pretty packed with florals all right well i'm gonna finish adding the greens and i'll be right back with you to give you the next step stay tuned all right so now that we have our greenery all in place what we need to do is we're going to select what is going to be our tallest forms and we're going to start with those flowers so basically we're going to dip into our glue the tallest ones want to define how tall our arrangement is going to be and so i'm going to go ahead and add one on that side and i'm going to pick the tallest one and i'm going to bring one down in a ladder motion remember you gradually go down until you get down and then also when you insert your flowers make sure that you insert them in an angle so that way they look like they're growing from the same spot and always dip into your glue if this is going to be a permanent arrangement if it's not if it's just for you and if you are like me and i just like to take them apart then there is no need for the glue however i do recommend you pick your stems with the pick steel pick that way while well, your arrangement is not going to be falling apart especially if it's going to be outside so we have four I'm gonna give it a little spin and I'm gonna add the fifth one right over on this side, but not without adding my glue right here. And so basically just go ahead and insert your, okay? Now that's going to determine how tall the flowers are going to be. However, there's going to be some grasses that I'm going to add that I cannot wait to show you. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the girth of the arrangement. So that's how tall it's going to be. Now this is how why the bouquet is going to be remember what happens on the right happens on the left so give it a little spin bring your next flower dip it into your glue like this and we're going to repeat the same step on the other side to balance the bouquet like that and as you guys can see that's how wide the arrangement is going to be that's how tall the arrangement is going to be when it comes down to the flower so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to give it a spin and I'm gonna bring another one because what happens on the left happens on the right. And once you spin, you have to repeat the exact same step. So I'm gonna add another one right here, like that. Then I'm gonna spin and now I'm gonna do the exact same thing over on this side. So easy, you guys. If you just follow these instructions, anyone can be a florist. If you know me, then you know that I am a self-taught floral arrangement person. And then also I taught myself how to make reeds and all of the things that you see here in the channel. So if I can do it and if I can teach myself how to speak English, how to make floral arrangements, I'm sure that if you tried, you can do it as well. All right, so that's what the bouquet looks like. And if you guys see, there's like a, uh, like a star right here and then also the height of the arrangement. I'm gonna put it over to this side so I can work on it. So the next thing I'm going to add is gonna be some of these really beautiful burlap roses. And I'm going to start with the tallest one as well because I want it to be right here in the middle between the other ones. So basically just add some glue and I'm gonna start right here. And I'm going to go one step down from the tallest one. And I'm going to repeat, remember what happens on the left happens on the right. So I'm gonna move over to the other side not without dipping into this glue because I want to make sure that it stays in place. And so I'm going to add right here. Then I'm going to give it a little spin and I'm going to add a third one right here to make that famous triangle that we're always looking for in the floral design world, which means a balance. If you have that perfect triangle, that means your bouquet has been balanced. All right, like that. And so I have a few more of this. I'm going to go ahead and gradually go down one step. Think of, a, uh, think of a step ladder. You know, you have to gradually go down one step when you're going down and gradually go up one step when you're going up. And as you guys can see, it's starting to bring the same flower all the way down. So I'm going to do the same over on this side. What happens on the left? happens on the right and what goes up always must come down all right so i'm gonna add that one right there i'm gonna add our last one over on this side making sure that i let that glue drip down because that's what's gonna secure my flower in place and let me take this cloth 
out so you guys can see as you can see there is balance all of the flowers are all the way around the perimeter all right everyone when you are making a floral arrangement that is this large what you need to do is you need to ground the flowers what i mean is you need a few of these bigger bloom in this case the hydrangea i need to tuck them all the way down and i'm gonna show you i'm gonna do one right here and you want to take it all the way down so that way there is that depth your eye travels all the way into the bouquet instead of just stopping at the greenery you're giving that um, balance by allowing that flower as you can see oops you see how your eye goes all the way into the bouquet and in this case i'm only going to use four of these hydro or three i'm sorry of these hydrangeas and i'm going to do them in a triangle that way it seems like there is flowers all the way around and as you guys can see it really calls your eye in into this bouquet all right i'm gonna get all of the accent flowers ready and i'll be right back stay tuned okay so now i'm gonna add some of this really tall delphinium and i'm going to add the very first one right here on the top and i'm just gonna make sure that it goes all the way down to my foam and i want to take it one step up from this flower right here so i'm going to do two right here on the very top by adding like this and you want to make sure that they spread out because that's what's going to give that bouquet once again the balance that we're looking for and now we're going to move one step down into the foam like this and so because of what happens on the left now i have to repeat this on the other side and the best way is to just go ahead and spin it around so you know where you need to insert that flower in this case it's going to be right here and so now I'm going to spin one more time, about 180 degrees, and then I'm gonna start doing one step further down, like this. Sometimes it's just easier to push up and down to make sure that that flower locks into place. And then I'm gonna add this one right about here. And so that's what it's looking like. Now I'm gonna add some grasses and I'll be right back. All right, so I found this really beautiful Himalayan grass and I just absolutely love it because this is what's gonna give it that wild character to any floor arrangement. I love working with Himalayan grass. It is one of my favorites because look, it just gives it that really natural look and wild look. And it's always about those last details when you are doing your floor arrangements and just keep in mind what happens on the left happens on the right once you insert on your left spin immediately 180 and then go ahead and do it again like this i need to spin around just about a third and then i'm going to go ahead and add another one right here and you want this wild natural look on your bouquet then one last one right here If you follow me on Instagram, then you saw that a few days ago I was out shopping at Shinoda Design Center and I want to show you some of the things that I bought for fall. This is just a little portion of it. And um, I'm going to start with this bag right here. I really don't know what's in each bag. So let's start with this one. Okay, so I got some more of these paper mache containers to make floral bouquets. Like you guys just saw on this video, uh, these are very handy when it comes down to for making. And I think I got another tiny, I love this little pot because it's made out of concrete and it is so cute. It has this like distressed band on the top. And I just thought that this would be really cute to put on a nightstand or somewhere where you need just a little touch of fall. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this down. I'm just gonna go ahead and sit it down here on the floor for now. And I'm gonna move on to this one. I know what this one is. I'm gonna be decorating three different lanterns for you guys to give you ideas on how to decorate lanterns. And I went ahead and got, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop it on the floor. How about that? And I love the way they pack their stuff because they really take care of it. But look at these cute little pilgrims. Aren't these just so adorable? 
I love the little child and the mom and the dad, and this is gonna go inside of a lantern uh, closer to Thanksgiving because I really feel like all the cornucopia and all of this bountifulness is more for Thanksgiving. So I got myself one of these really cute pilgrims. All right, so then what I got right here is, let's see. I just go crazy every time I go to Shinoda and my poor wallet. Oh yeah, I got two sets of pumpkins and I just love the way they come on this cute little bag. So I got one of that shape, then I got one of this shape, and this is probably for a wreath, I'm not sure. And then also what I got is four of these moss balls that are going to go on a very natural looking wreath, and I just absolutely love this. Um, you can make this, but uh, I just love make, uh, buying them already made because they're actually cheaper buying them made than having to deal with the glue and all of that stuff. Then I wanna show you this swag right here. I cannot wait to show you guys what we're doing with her. I love the sunflower, I love the pine cones, the Chinese lanterns. This is so cute. It was super, super affordable. Let me see if I have the price right here. Um, it was under $20, so we're gonna do something really fun with her. And uh, don't mind if the foliages come out because we're gonna put it apart. So I'm gonna really be excited to show you this right here. Okay, so let's see what's on this bag. It's like Christmas, aren't you just as excited as I am? I just love shopping because I can come home and then show you all the things. Oh yes, um, in the ribbon section, they have this really cool material. And I don't know if you follow Rebecca Robinson, but she uses this material on her Christmas trees. Well, I'm gonna use it on my fall decorating this year. It is this uh, kind of like a grapevine material. You stretch it out and it's like a ribbon bolt. So I cannot wait to show you how we're gonna be using this. And then I got some ornaments in the full colors. I got some of this orange, and then I got some of this other orange with the glitter, and uh, these are 25% off right now, Ashinoda Design Center. And then also I got some other kind of orange. So I got three types of ornaments that are going to be used on a wreath, not on a Christmas tree, but on a wreath, and also on a Christmas tree decorated for fall that I cannot wait to show you guys. And this is the cutest thing that I bought. Isn't he just adorable? I need a matching outfit for this guy. He is going to go on, I think a lantern, a wreath, or even the Christmas tree decorated for fall. Not quite sure. But as you guys can see, the theme going on right here is very natural looking. It's very um, fall and I cannot wait to show you. So I'm gonna put him right here. I have one last little bag and then we're gonna get back to our projects. I just wanted to share with you guys all these items. And just so you know, yes, Shinoda Design Center is wholesale. However, they have set up an, uh, an account for the Ramona Home Viewers. So if you see any of the items that you like right here for fall or the ones we're gonna be using for Christmas, for Shinoda, just go ahead and give them a call. Tell them that you saw it at Ramona Home and they'll let you use that specially made account for Ramona Home Viewers. All right, so now I wanna show you this ribbon. Isn't this just fabulous? This is pinned right here. It stretches out, it's one of those ribbons that you grab it and you stretch it out and it becomes just wider. So I cannot wait to show you guys how we're gonna be using this. We might use it on the Christmas tree, we might use it on the lantern, I'm not quite sure. And this ribbon right now is 40% off. I absolutely love it. We used this ribbon for Christmas on the champagne and it was just so beautiful. All right, and the thing that dropped right here is this cute little urn that we're gonna be using for a pumpkin arrangement for a side table, for the mantle, and it's made out of cast iron. It is kinda heavy. Um, I love stuff like this because it's kinda garden looking, but it can go really well in your decor indoors. And then continuing with the ribbons, I got some more of the pumpkin ribbon, and then I got some more of this plaid because I think these three ribbons look really, really good together. And you can really create some really beautiful uh, displays with these ribbons. And the last thing I purchased was this metal container to create a centerpiece that is going to be long and low for your table. So I can now wait to show this also is made out of cast iron or just iron, some kind of metal. Actually, I'm not even, I just say cast iron because it sounds fancy. But it's made out of metal and it's kind of heavy and we're gonna do something really cool perhaps they're constructing the swag. I'm not quite sure yet, so stay tuned for that. All right, let's get back to another DIY here at Ramona Home.
Who doesn't like shopping, right? I really hope you enjoyed that mini little haul of items I'm gonna be using for future fall DIYs here on the channel. But now I'm gonna show you how to create a beautiful small wreath in case that you have a small door or a storm door in your home or apartment. This is going to be so much fun, so let's get started. All right, everyone, so for this uh, wreath, what we're going to need is one of these wreath forms from the dollar store. I'm gonna use a variety of fall flowers and we're gonna do an ombre effect on this wreath. So I chose some of these little uh, daisy mums. I also chose some of these beautiful sunflowers. I chose some chrysanthemums and some of these mums with burlap in them. So I have one, two, three, four types of flowers, actually five because I have also this hydrangea and I'm gonna use my wire cutters. I'm also going to use a little bow and I'm gonna show you how to do a trick with extra ribbon for this particular wreath. This is gonna be so much fun. So to create an ombre effect, what you need to do is you're going to go ahead and start with your darkest color on the bottom and that's going to be this daisy mom and I'm going to cut because you wanna make sure that you wanna penetrate all the way through the foam so what you wanna do is you wanna stagger some of these flowers on the same color. You wanna start all the same color first, making sure that you penetrate that foam and you cover some of this perimeter. So when your stem is too long, just go ahead and give it a clip because remember, we're gonna penetrate that foam and make sure that we cover most of it, okay? So we're gonna do last five. I'm gonna do this sunflower next. And that's gonna be six. And make sure that you push that really far in. So then what you wanna do next to uh, make that ombre effect, you're gonna start with the next color in the color wheel, which will be on the same family, but a shade lighter. And we're gonna just start adding some flowers. I'm gonna add three to this side. Remember what happens on the left happens on the right. So I'm going to immediately move to this side. And you wanna make sure that you go as far down because you wanna cover all of this foam. You don't wanna see any of this foam. So that's three on each side. I'm gonna do one more, five, six. So then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring the next one, lighter one is gonna be this chrysanthemum with the burlap. And you wanna start on the bottom. So I'm gonna do, oops, this came out. When you have this problem where the flowers come out, just go ahead and put a little dab of glue and that should fix the problem. So I'm gonna add two, then I'm gonna add one to the inside of it. And I'm gonna add three. So far, so good. Then I'm gonna go over to the other side. I'm gonna cut a little bit. So I'm gonna do one. Thumbs up if you guys are enjoying this video and this series, and I cannot wait to come up with brand new, more ideas for the fall every Sunday here at Ramona Home leading into the holiday season, which it's what we love, right? Okay, so now that you have a strip with that flower, what you need to do is you need to graduate one with the same one right here. You wanna make sure that that color kinda blends. It's kinda like when you're doing your makeup and you're blending your makeup, that's what you wanna do, just push it in. So that way there's a little bit of that uh, color kinda blending in. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna grab the lighter flower, which is this chrysanthemum. We're gonna add right here, one, two, and three. And when you don't have a stem, just go ahead and grab one of the ones that you poked out and then add it right there. So that's three. Then I'm gonna move over to this side. I'm gonna add one. Now this one needs to be cut. Actually, I'm gonna take this flower out. I'm gonna put this stem because that one had glue since it's from a past project. And I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna do one, two, I'm gonna grab a third one, and I'm going to do a fourth one right here, like this. And we wanna leave this open because that's where our bow is going to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all of this. And I wanna show you with this bow right here, this bow is already made, but I want longer tails, so it's a little bit more luscious. So what you need to do is, just grab your tails, fold them in half, grab it right here, and we're gonna give it a fresh dovetail. So you dovetail both of your ends at the same time. 
then you make sure you fold it in half. You're going to pinch or gather, and then we're going to tie all of this together right here, making sure that those tails always go down like that. And we're going to tie it really securely. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the wreath back in. I'm going to attach my bow over to my wreath on the back. We're gonna fluff in a second like this. Fluff your wreath. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and put one of these tails under the wreath so it just shows. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pinch right here. I'm going to open my flowers right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of these flowers and I'm going to poke it through the fabric to hold that tail. So now I'm gonna fluff all of these flowers. I'm gonna put this in the dough and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, everyone. So I just wanted to show you real quick what this cute little ombre fall wreath looks like. As you can see, all of the flowers blend together to create an ombre effect. And the secret right here is to alternate the colors uh, from dark to light and also to stagger some of those colors as you move up from the dark to the light color. I really hope you enjoyed this DIY and if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I really hope you enjoy all of these fall DIYs and that you are inspired to create something beautiful for fall in your own home. I cannot wait to read your comments, so leave me a comment down below and let me know which of all these fall DIYs was your favorite. If you enjoyed this video, I'm gonna leave a playlist right here where you can watch more to be inspired to create something beautiful this fall season. Thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing. You can watch more videos right now. Until next time, bye.